Welcome to another episode of the Selective Podcast. I'm your host, XR Arguello. This week on the podcast, we're doing something a little bit different. We have a few returning guests from the team. We'll get introductions uh, to those guys in a bit. But this week on the pod, we're going to be talking about our top five grails, the five items that we would eventually one day love to have. Now, I want to preface this by saying that obviously narrowing it down to five items was damn near impossible. And uh, Corey and Dylan, who are joining us today, uh, we'll kind of talk about that, how this was honestly kind of weird to narrow it down to five. Um, but I think for me, I wanted to narrow it down to, to five timeless pieces that I know 20, 30 years down the line, I would still have a love and an appreciation for. So to the audience, bear with us. Uh, this is going to be a fun episode. By the way, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, I'm going to have every single item linked in the show notes below so you can follow along. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, I will be uploading photos in the actual YouTube video itself of these items so you can also follow along. I want to make this as interactive and as enjoyable for the listener and the viewer. So, uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy this episode. Feedback is greatly appreciated on this new format that we're tackling. And we hope that you can follow along and have some enjoyment while we geek about some of these items. So, long ass intro. Guys, Corey, Dylan, thanks for joining me today. Uh, Dylan, we'll start with you. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Glad to be back. Doing good, man. Everyone loves that that sweet, soothing voice, man. So we have to get it back. <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, great to have you, Dylan. Uh, you all may know him as Waffle. He's our boy. Uh, and also, last but not least, of course, we have Corey, the returning guest, the people's champion. Corey, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I don't know if I'm really the people's champion. I don't know if the <laughs> people are really fucking with me. But yeah, sure. We'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll rock with that. Guys, our top five girl list. To be honest with you, when I first pitched this idea to you all, you were always like super down about it. But then like the more we talked about it, we're like, man, this is stupid to narrow it down to five. Uh, yeah. How hard was it to narrow it down to five, Corey? Uh, I think I could probably go on for like, I probably deal with a full length, like college course about <laughs> every piece I want. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it, it wasn't that easy, I guess. Dylan, how was it for you narrowing it down to five? Well, you said grails and I was like, all right, I'm down. But then you said five and I'm like, wait, hold on. So it, <laughs> I took me like probably three hours to go through everything to make sure I'm like, okay, do I really want this one? Or do I want this one? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was hard to narrow it down. And to be fair to the viewers, like uh, narrowing it down to five is impossible. So there are definitely things that we left off this list that we would obviously love to have one day. Uh, this is obviously just a reflection of our taste right now and stuff that we would want to have in our hands right now. So uh, I guess another fun thing about this discussion is that we you get to hear us geek out about some of the stuff that, that we love to have. And I know that's something that Corey and Dylan also love to do. So enough rambling, guys, with the intros. We're going to start with outerwear. Uh, Corey, do you want to kick it off with uh, one of your outerwear pieces that you picked for your top five? Yeah. Uh, so I guess my outerwear, I'd probably have to go with the Velvet Bomber from Autumn Winter four, or sorry, 15 by Hyder Ackerman. Mm. So there's the infamous red, which I believe... I think most people know nowadays because yeah. of you know, Kanye. It's been re-released -re twice, once by a retailer called Autograph and once by this thing, this like business called Heat, uh, mm -hmm. who do, I think, mystery boxes. They did like a collab. Yeah. They re-released it. But for me specifically, I only want the original Autumn Winter 15 version because I'm extremely picky. Mm. Um, and uh, that jacket is going for some crazy prices. I had a guy offer it to me a few months ago for 3,500. I said no, because I thought that was crazy. Hmm. Then I saw someone else selling it for like 5K and I think I, I might have missed out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it's an iconic Jack. Uh, it's an iconic piece from Hyder Ackerman. Like you mentioned, the fall winter 15 version is obviously a little bit more coveted than some of the re-releases. Uh, mm -hmm. The Heat re-release was, uh, and if you all know, Heat does mystery boxes. They do luxury mystery boxes. And that one actually released a little bit more recently. Um, yeah. And I think this jacket kind of exploded with popularity initially because of Kanye, but Hyder Ackman was releasing some other great pieces at the time as well. So the reasons why I don't like the autograph re-release oh, yeah, in yeah. that the zippers, I believe, they're still Recogni zips, but they actually zip in the wrong direction. The fucking Chet zips, instead of zipping like, it's like, I think the real, I shouldn't say the real one, but like the original <laughs> ones zips like, it's like inward, whereas the autograph re-release zips out outwards yeah. on heat they fixed this issue and made it the same as the originals but i don't know there's just something about that drop that just seems a little bit like 
not not sketchy, but just like something just seemed a little bit off to me, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I think nonetheless, it's still like a perfect, like not even alternative, but just perfect like replacement for the original. If like you're interested in the in the piece, but just I'm super picky and also kind of like a collector, so I'd rather have the original. Yeah, and that's a good point. And I I think in the future we should dedicate just a podcast episode talking about re-releases and kind of like what these brands are doing. So that's something that we definitely sure. want to attack when develop in the future. Um, for an outer piece that I picked from Hyder Ackerman, uh, for one of my top five was actually the spring, summer 17 bleach kimono. Uh, it's a piece that Corey has <laughs> that I don't, yeah. it was featured on last week's or this last month's, excuse me, pickups of the month for the selective. And mm -hmm. it's a piece that to me just embodies everything I love about Hyder Ackerman. I think he has, uh, what he's known for is, is a meticulous selection of materials, but also just like the silhouettes of his pieces are very like. I don't know, to me, they convey uh, a feeling of, of just like, they're very soft. They seem like, a, a, I don't want to say drapey, but they fall in the body very nicely. And I think that Hyder Eggman has a, a, a particular touch and a particular eye for, for how the human, how, how garments flow on the human body. I think this is one of those pieces that perfectly embodies that. But for me, you know, even worn on you, on your body type, it just like flows very nicely. It, it's very fluid. And uh, the particular red accents and a little bit of the black accents around the collar going down to the chest, just add like this fluidity to it. I don't know. I think of, I think of like fire when I look at this going down to like a pure, beautiful white, silky white. Um, and it's just a beautiful piece to look at. It's one that I would love to have one day in my collection. Um, it's a piece that I feel like if I had it, it could work in my rotation. Um, I don't know how I would particularly style it, but I think a nice pair of boots and some black trousers would do the job and let, you know, kind of the piece speak for itself. But Dylan, uh, outdoor piece for you. So I'm going with the St. Laurent Fall Winter 15 D-ring. I think Corey wants it as well, right? Yeah, I do. I love like every special seasonal St. Laurent biker. Dude, why is this thing so rare? I don't understand. I've seen like two max. Mm. I've held one that was brand new and I regret not buying it that day. Shout out to my boy, Nathan though. He sold that to my friend, Randy, Randy, I hate you. But anyways, <laughs> besides the point, I got to find it. I can't find it. And I really want that piece, but it just fits. So it fits so well in my body, that specific one. I don't know why all, I've had the spring summer 13 L01. I've had the fall into 16 L17. I've had the heritage fall into 13 L17. I've had all these different ones and they all fit horribly in my body, but that one for some reason fits. Mm -hmm so snug and so beautifully on my frame for somebody who's not like for myself who's not very well versed in Saint Laurent biker jackets um you know obviously it's become like a staple of the brand if you will for the past for the past like half decade I don't know if that's accurate Dylan right. but, but what what is it about like this particular one that stands out to you versus some of the other silhouettes honestly just the fit of how it was on my body um it, I think it's lamb the D ring. I'm not sure if it's calf or lamb. I don't really remember, but the calf ones just never fit well in my body. And so I've, you know, I've tried the other ones and I think that I, the, I think it's the rarest one was the heritage L uh, 17 from fall to 13. Mm. That one by far has been like the rarest one for me that I could find. And that one, I wanted it for years and years. And then I finally actually held it in my hands and it was horrible. It was, it was so heavy. It was so just sloppy fitting. It was so wide and cropped. Mm. which fall into 13 is for St. Laurent. Yeah. And, and you said you've actually been able to hold this piece in hand. Um, and, and you had that, I mean, you, you passed up on the chance, unfortunately to get it, but do you have any other biker, biker denim jacket or biker leather jackets, excuse me, from St. Laurent? Not in hand. No, I've, I've, I live in Arizona. So yeah, yeah I, I, well, I contradict myself by saying that cause I have much of shear lines. So <laughs> which are even like more worn than leather jackets, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I do also want the Spring Summer 14 multi zip uh, leather mm. jacket. That one I, I have not found in a 48 in a while. Yeah, that, that that's a beautiful piece too. Uh, with this one though, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say they they all look the same because that would be really stupid of me. But for someone who's no, uneducated, but you're right though. You're, okay, you're, no, you're right. right. The multi zip and the deering really, it's just it's just the detailing. Like it's mm. the multi zip, uh, uh, like. Uh, to most people, they, it looks exactly like the same as the regular L01. It just has like a few extra zips and... Yeah, it looks like the L17. Oh, sorry. Almost yeah, L17 too. is what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. L17, sorry. Okay, so it's um, not no, it's not wrong for me to say that they all look the same. <laughs> no, definitely not. 
Yeah. The whole uh, look that everyone does too is like copy paste, honestly. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's just, I'm it's gonna be either, honest. It's like, yeah, it's black or brown Wyatt or black or cigar or fucking whatever Wyatt's. Uh, skinny black jeans. skinny jeans or blue denim or like blue crash denim and then like either a, like a tucked in tee or like a fucking Hawaiian shirt and then just the biker. Right. Yeah, but it's it, it, it's a it's, it's, a, it's a it's a good look. It's a look it's that's a look. become like synonymous with the brand though. I yeah. Mean, um, do you know what these go for right now, Dylan? So I know one sold on grill for 3.5 mm. and that's the only one I've seen for sale besides the one that I saw for sale um, in 20. 16 for like 3.3 so you're, you're paying in the mid threes for it i i've never yeah. found another one though I've, I've been looking every single day since yeah, yeah. um yeah no that, that's insane and, and then i'll add for the uh spring summer 14 multi-zip that goes for about six five or six. Oh my gosh that yeah. one's a really steep one and then the patchwork one that i think Corey wants is like yeah 10. yeah <laughs> that that one's, one I've le- i haven't seen for sale like ever oh have the you know, one I've, I've seen, seen for it sale. once for like 10 would you pay three, four for this, Dylan? For the D ring, yeah, hundred percent. Oh man, <laughs> I have no straight up, hundred percent. I would. The, the multi zip though, I'd have a little bit of like trouble paying for, but I probably I'd have to sell something hundred percent to afford it, but I yeah. would. Yeah, and at the end of the day, this is a grill list, so I mean, whether whether yeah. <laughs> this is in an ideal money, world. money aside, <laughs> right, right, money aside, these are pieces yeah. that we would get. And- I mean, to be fair with Saint Laurent, you technically are paying significantly less than the retail. Like the patchwork, the one, the patchwork one I liked, as well as the checkerboard one that I liked. I'm not 100 sure about the patchwork one, but I know the checkerboard one. I think it retailed for about 18 to 20k, and mm-hmm. the last one I saw sold for 10. So you are paying 50 percent of retail. It's still 10k, but you know, 50 percent of retail. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, Dylan, really good choice. Um, Moving on for outerwear piece for me, I'm gonna go with the Capital Boro jacket. Um, I guess my my ethos, my philosophy with this list is that I just wanted to pick pieces that um, not only stood out to me, but I think could fit in my particular rotation for a long time. As you guys, as you guys know, I really like vintage and western. Um, I like clothes that are like really beat in and worn in. And I don't know the the first time I saw this piece, it just like the emotions that I got with it. It it just it confused me, right? Um, it was a time where I wasn't really familiar with capital. Um, didn't really know much about the brand philosophy. And I guess it, to a different extent, didn't really like appreciate what it meant, even though like it was intriguing to me. Uh, but uh, right, I have here right now an article from Shop Don't Tell. And they define, quote, the Japanese term borrow refers to objects that have been used, broken, and worn to tatters, then mended extensively and lovingly used for beyond their normal expectations. And I guess that's like the best way to describe the borrow jacket. It's just like, um, it looks... It looks like a very, very well put together piece of clothing while at the same time looking tattered and looking like it, it, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't work. It's kind of like a juxtaposition that I really like. And it's a piece that right now you can probably get for like $2,000, which is absolutely a lot of money. But I feel like it's just one of those pieces that is very, um, it's just very iconic to capital. It's a piece that I could, I could wear forever and, and you know, would love to wear it in. And I feel like it's a piece that, that looks like it's gone through the ringer, if you will. So is it really 2000? Uh, yeah. You can get them for like 2k. Damn. Okay. I thought it was like a 1500 or like 1200. Yeah. No, they've gone up a little bit. Yeah. I actually wanted that a while back. Um, one KJ again, he had one in stock on his site obtained and I was going to buy it, but I wanted the Guidis instead, which I did end up buying Bought the Guidis. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's a tough, that's a tough decision to make too. So I was like, boots or Guidis or boots <laughs> are, um, the capital. I, I went with the Guidis. So, right, right. but I might get that eventually. I do like it a lot. Yeah. No, I know. I like how it looks with like the undercover jeans that I want. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah, You gotta get the matching set. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole matching look. The, the all yeah. patchwork and stuff. Uh, and then like stacked on top of you, you have to get like the Dior strip jacket the last one <laughs> and then you have to stack the dior strips like wear one on one leg and then like the 85s on the other oh my god oh my god that's how we're probably done already yeah probably, probably yeah on instagram yeah like remember if you guys remember like how like this high beast used to wear like one pair of yeezys on one foot like a pair of like bread stripe v2s on one foot and like a pair of like i don't know fucking zebras on the other yeah <laughs> you, you brought up a bad memory i did that no <laughs> really no i had I had turtle doves and I had the pirate blacks on one on each foot. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that picture has been deleted. You cannot find that. I'm so sorry for everybody listening. You can't find that. 
So don't worry. Don't look it up. I feel like uh, every former Jerry boy probably has archived all their Jerry boy pictures. Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. They deleted it. Yeah. 100%. I mean, come on, guys. We can't knock it, though. It was it was always hot at the time, you know? It was cool. It was cool. Fog military sneakers, Yeezys. Yeah. I wanted those it so was... bad. The military sneakers with those shark really tooth um, sole. Yeah, the I love the gum sole ones. They were like a Max Field LA exclusive, I think. And there's yeah. also all oh my god, one Max that I really Field. Liked. Yeah, dude. Oh my god, that, yeah. brings, that brings, back back. brings back memories. Brings back memories. All right, so we got three out of our pieces out of the way. Corey, next piece that you wanted to pick for your top five. So I guess if we're gonna stick with outerwear, um, I have kind of like a tie in that it's kind of like the same piece, but not really. Well, kind of two. So there's the Montalto, well, okay, so Montalto is the name of the, I guess, pattern, but it's Jacquard coat from Autumn Winter 14 from Heider Ackerman. Um, from my knowledge, this is a very, very limited piece, and that's why one one of the reasons why it's like, I think of it as a grail and that it's basically impossible to get. So there's this coat in white and this uh, and also in this kind of like olive, drab, grayish brown colorway. Mm-hmm. The grayish brown actually was released, got was sold at retailers, but was quite limited, whereas the white one, I have literally only seen it until the Swinton and the runway model. Mm. Um, from what I know, when, you know, when like that whole process of when the hider was like selling to the stockist and they were like, okay, what items do you want? Stockist didn't order enough of the white version to actually produce it. And so it never actually went into full production. So it's extremely limited, probably like five in the world or something like that. Along with this coat, there's also a blazer and a matching set of trousers with the exact same pattern, which I also would want to have, but mainly is the it's the coat for me um yeah super rare and i do know that it was worn by jerry lorenzo which is not the reason i want it but i did originally (laughs) see it on jerry back in the day but yeah it's just i think for me it has this beautiful pattern it's made of this i want to say 52 percent uh silk 48 percent cotton there's something about that blend that was definitely extremely expensive to make because when Hyder redid these kind of pattern coats in autumn of 19, I want to say, they were made of, I think, polyester, actually. Mm. Because that original blend, I think, was too expensive to redo. So I also wanted to give a small shout out to this other Hyder jacket. It's the two shearlings. Well, there's a whole set of shearlings, but these beautiful lizard neck shearling bombers. So he did he did some lizard neck shearling bombers for autumn of 14, I believe. But the ones I'm specifically looking at are these uh, ones that he did for Brute. For Ludi, for Autumn Taylor 18. The two ones that I specifically sent were this one in this emerald green with a black shearling neck and this kind of gray one with a white shearling neck. So the lizard neck detailing is actually underneath the collar. And yeah. these jackets, it's like best craftsmanship out of any brand in Berludi, as well as Hyder Ackerman's just his just eye for detailing. Yeah, good picks. Um overall really nice pieces. I like that. Um Dylan, next piece. What do you got? I've got the Raf Poltergeist sweater. I'm sure everybody knows what that is. Mm-hmm. It's a very, yeah. very coveted piece from Raf. I'm not a Raf head by any means, but that's one of the things from him that I really, really love. Same. I've, I found it back in 20, like 14 when I was first getting the St. Laurent and I couldn't afford it back then. And so I stopped looking for it. And then I found it again in 2017 on the grilled 100 and it sold for like what? I th- wait, no, no, hold on. I think it was um, like 70 bucks. On the grill, really? I swear, to, I swear to God, I remember. Really? I remember it sold instantly, and everyone was freaking out about it. So yeah. it was super cheap. It was. I know it was like really, really cheap. But now it's like four or five thousand, I think. Yeah. And because archives getting so popular now, it's, it's like impossible to get for like a good price. Like I want to pay like two thousand max for it, but. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, I, and I've never held a raft piece in general, so I can't say anything about it, like fit or quality or anything. I'm sure it's got good quality, but I just like it from how it looks. I'll mm-hmm. be straight up. My opinion on raft quality is it's, uh, I think it's a bit underwhelming for the price. Or, well, okay, not, but it's really underwhelming for the price because at the time, right, a lot of these archive raft pieces are from when raft was still a pretty small designer still on the come up. So the material, it's not, it's not like it's bad per se, but it's not really like, it's not on the same level as like, I guess, designer brands. And and to be fair, back then it wasn't priced like at like a designer brand, right? It was priced, I think like, I, I guess something more like, priced more like All Saints or like Acne Studios, like around that price point, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Dude, that's crazy to to think that nowadays that uh, Raph was prized at like Agni Studios because yeah I mean today it's just I mean we live in a different time sometimes uh, you know if we're thinking about these products and then now and not really think about what they were at the time but yeah like you're right like a lot of these 
mm-hmm. super old pieces. Like when these designers were first getting their feet in, in the door, it wasn't, you know what I mean? Like they weren't, it wasn't as coveted yeah. as it was now. So for my next piece, I'm going to go with the Rick Owens Fall Winter 17 Glitter uh, Pentagram, quote Pentagram Creeper Boots. Now, mm. from my understanding um, with this particular boot, now we did have it come out in two different models. We have the model with like a regular boot sole, and then we also have one where it's like a wood sole. Yeah, the Lego soles. Yeah, the yeah they're called the Lego oh, the soles. Legos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, they are notorious for breaking. Exactly. I was, gonna, I was gonna bring that up. I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, exactly. So, so for this, so for this particular. Uh, for this particular piece, I, I would go with with the non quote unquote Lego sole because, you know, obviously I want these. If I were to have these boots, I don't want them to last forever. Um, but yeah, an interesting point about these boots for myself and, and why I really like them. Um, I think for me, it just kind of embodies the rawness and edginess and kind of the the, the darkness that is Rick Owens. Um, and you know, some people might look at these boots and think they're a little corny or, or think that um, you know they might not age well with time. For me, it just kind of embodies. Rick, I don't know. When I look at these boots, I just think of Rick Owens, and um, we can get into the, the Lego versions later. But I have heard that those versions are notorious for falling apart and not necessarily, you know, lasting a very long time. Um, I've also heard that the lacing is actually interesting and interestingly enough, not a pentagram. I've heard it's actually something mm. else, but but they they get the name the pentagram for for some reason. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. So, uh, you know, for the sake of conversation, I'm going to call them the pentagram boots. But um, yeah, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll have the link down, or if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But I don't know. This is just a piece to me that just screams a, a statement piece. If I were to have this piece, I would just style it with like some black trousers and like a black shirt, to be honest with you, and let the boots kind of speak for themselves. But I think it's kind of like a uniform Rick piece, even though um, it kind of stands out in its own right. But yeah, it, it, it's it's one of it, it's the first piece of like Rick footwear that I saw that personally captivated me. Um, and the one listing I found on Grilled was a thousand dollars that sold. It's obviously not going for that anymore. It goes for a lot more than that, and these are pretty hard to find, um, especially the Lego iterations, like we were talking about, because they have been notorious to fall apart. Dylan, I know you wanted to say some thoughts about that. So I do like the Lego ones, but I don't want to be walking and then have to play Jenga with my damn shoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like I want to be able to walk, but yeah. I love how they look. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie; those are really sick. Yeah, but I, and they are—they're like four, like what, thirty-five to four thousand now. Yeah, they they go for a lot. I mean, they're really high up. Yeah, yeah. I, if honestly, if I would have saw that at a thousand a couple years ago, I, I would have bought it at a thousand. But you know, f- for what they're going with now, it's kind of a pipe dream. But hey, we just saw Rick do the Doc Martens <laughs> collaboration, which you know I wasn't a big fan of. He put the same yeah. like, pentagram on them, if you will. Uh, personally, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I think that gives me hope that this particular lacing system, we've obviously seen it on a lot of Rick shoes throughout the year. So I'm hoping, hoping one day that he maybe not necessarily re-releases the Creepers uh, f- from from 2017, but maybe we'll get like a similar silhouette with these boots because I definitely want to have uh, the quote unquote pentagram motif uh, on a boot at some point. I just think it's really dark and edgy and I don't know, man, yeah. I-, I like that a lot. Corey. Any footwear for you in this top five? Uh, before I go to footwear, have you seen the pentagram Crocs? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no. I'll be copping those. <laughs> yeah, those those are a must. Those are dope. Oh my yeah. god! I'm not copping the. So you're like scrubs and the pentagram Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's a look. Yeah, I'm definitely not copping the pentagram Crocs. Uh, but yeah, footwear, Corey. Yeah. What you got? I'm gonna have to go with the the Berluti Austin boots, which mm. were done by Hyder as well. Um, and again, this is something that like I see is just, it's because Berluti started out as a footwear, uh, like a shoemaker, right? The first Berluti shoe was the Alessandro, which was eponymous based on Alessandro Berluti. And it was crazy at the time because it was like a single piece of leather. Um, there was no visible stitching and it was just like super high quality shoe, right? And Berluti has been known for their shoemaking for such a long time. So you combine that kind of quality and craftsmanship with you know, this super sleek kind of rockstar silhouette, very similar to a St. Laurent boot even, mm-hmm. um, but I personally prefer this a little bit more. And also actually for this boot, um, from the first did their own iteration of it, which mm. I'm probably gonna buy instead because I cannot find these boots at all anywhere. Mm. And from the first version is also like a third of the price and also extremely well-made. I mean, you have heard of the first boots, you can vouch for them. Yeah. Uh, and actually, if anyone's interested, it's called on their website it's called the Paolo, I believe. Yeah, no, from the first is a great brand. And that's a great boot. I mean it's a great pick. So 
if you're not going to get these, you might as well get the friendly first. Um, yo, uh, Dylan, any footwear on this list? So I'm going with the Rick Owens Spring Summer 09 uh, Mohawk Dunks. Mm. In my opinion, they're the best looking dunks. I know they're the most rare and the most probably hyped because I know dunks are coming back and they're super hyped right now. But I mean, they're my personal favorite just to look at. You know what I mean? And I know, is it, is it, am I right? I'm not a Rick head, so please don't yell at me. <laughs> but don't they like um, turn like a silver color? Like once the paint starts chipping off or something? No, no you're right. Because in the picture I sent, uh, you can actually see the silver, uh, the silver and kind of like white chipping. Why do you think these are the best though, Dylan? Just from the look. I just love mm. how like they have um, like a nap to them mm. compared mm. to the other ones. And I'm personally not a fan of the Chrome Hearts ones because they're so expensive. <laughs> Like, yeah, what, yeah, of course. Fifteen, twenty thousand dollar listings on grilled right now. <laughs> yeah, and we're actually gonna have a, a listing of our own soon on Selective. So Ooh. any oh, that is true. Rome Hearts Dunk collectors, stay stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled. I guess. Yeah, stay <laughs> tuned. That was what I was fucking looking to say. Moving on to to my next pair of footwear, my last pair of footwear on this list. I have the NWA Shirt Backley's boots, but these are in the suede iteration with a gum sole. Now, I've only seen one person actually own this pair and that's that's ro uh ro Siv on youtube and just uh, i believe ro Siv also on instagram he uh he runs lake vienna which is an archive store um shout out ro one of the homies but yeah he has i mean the andy millimeter backley's boot to me is, is an iconic boot and it's a boot that uh by the end of the year i want to buy but this particular boot it's suede it has the back lace but the the midsole is like gum it, it has like that gum color that you would see like on a sneaker it's really interesting i've never seen these on grilled i've never seen these anywhere else but it's a boot that one day i hope to have in my collection uh ro has a youtube video where he showcases them off and he says that they'll probably he'll probably never get rid of them so um you know for someone who basically touches archive all the time for someone for someone like him to say that he'll never get rid of them is probably a good sign uh, of their value and of their worth so yeah i'm gonna keep this one short but for me it's the andy back lace boot and the suede iteration with the gum sole. I don't think that they have an, I, I don't know the actual like model name of them, but that's what I'm going to call them. But, um, but yeah, um, Corey next on the list. Finishing my Prada shirt archive. So I have, if you guys don't know the Christoph Chimay shirts from Automotor 16, I personally have five of them. Uh, the survival utopia shirt, which is this kind of art of like these, animals on the shirt. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and I have in red and black, there's a red long sleeve, a red short sleeve, a black short sleeve and a black long sleeve. I have the black long sleeve and the red short sleeve. There's the Thermidor shirt, which is this kind of picture of this woman's face on the right side of the shirt. It's just like a white shirt with this picture of the woman's face. There's the impossible true love. And there is, I want to say three or maybe four iterations of this. There is the infamous blue one that people probably know because of Kanye or whoever. Uh, I have the short sleeve version of that. And there's a long sleeve that I also really like. Um, and then there's also this alternate colorway version that I've seen a few sell, sell on grilled, but like it's still relatively rare. I'm not sure if the long sleeve exists for that, but I, I know the short sleeve exists. And then there is the blue important one shirt, which I also have. Uh, and then there's the, it's called the Fructidor shirt. I probably pronounced that wrong again. And it's just like this image of these like fruits on this shirt. It's, it's like an oil painting on a shirt, which I think is so fucking sick. And then the other final one that I'm looking for is the Banquet Thieves shirt in both the long sleeve and the short sleeve. If anyone's selling that, hit me up. I, I love that shirt. Now, one thing I do have to say is that the fit is not necessarily the best. It's not the most flattering is what I should say. For me, it kind of works because I'm already a pretty skinny guy. So when I wear them, it makes me look a little bit bigger which is kind of nice because i have a pretty scrawny build i'm like literally just like a rectangle do they feel like the hawaiians from spring summer 14 how they're like really cropped at the waist yeah yeah they, they are very i like that cropped. a lot i, I like yeah. that a lot Be beautiful shirts a, a good pick on those and yeah hopefully you can get those in the collection soon i actually like the way like that box your fit i think it works with slimmer silhouettes but um yeah yeah nonetheless beautiful pieces uh dylan next on the list for you I'm going to start with the pants. I'm going to start with the Undercover 04 But Beautiful Collection, the Asymmetrical Cargos. Mm. Mm. Those, I've seen one pair on my friend Tyler. Shout out to my, my boy Tyler. His name on Instagram is Nowhere Archive. He has a pair. He will never sell. I've tried hitting him up. He won't sell. Um, I think they go for about three or 4000 now. 
they've gone up. They were on Yahoo Japan back in the day for like six hundred to eight hundred dollars, and then now they're like three to four, even five. But in my opinion, they fit the best. He has some fit pics on his page uh, if you go follow him on Instagram. But they fit skinny. They fit. There's just so many. There's two zips on the right leg that just look amazing. Mm. I, just, I love how it looks. Honestly, I've never actually seen these before. They're so sick. They're my favorite cargos by far from any any cargos out there. Yeah, no, it, it it's a beautiful piece. I love like the just like the detailing on the amount of pockets, but also like the um like the straps that go around on the calf, and then also where where the pockets are, how it's like double. It looks like a double like a double stitch kind of or like two separate mm. stitchings, I guess, that follow the pocket curve. If you're following along with the podcast, you'll be able to see it up on your screen. But yeah, it's just a beautiful yeah. beautiful pen. I wonder what this right. go for it, now. The different zippers. Well, they go for about three to four thousand right now. Oh my god, dude! So and I'll never like, find them. What's like the early 2000s and like the very late nineties and having just the sickest cargos, right? Like mm -hmm. you have the Dolce Seriously. and Gabbana ones from like 2003, I think. You have the these ones. You have a bunch of wrap ones from again like 2003, 2000, whatever. You have the Helmet Lang ones from all of like 98, uh, 2004. Yeah, like yeah. And there, there's a pair of Margiela ones I think are really cool too, but they're like I'm not exactly sure if they're cargo. I know Travis Scott wore them. If any hype beasts. Like he wore them with the that fucking crazy gray Louis Vuitton puffer jacket and the Dior ones, but yeah, yeah, that's a good pick, Dylan. Hopefully, you can get your hands on that one because that's really rare. Hopefully, one day. Yeah, um, guys, I'm gonna finish off my last piece, uh, kind of going with Dylan. I'm not the biggest undercover guy, so please don't flame me uh, for this. But I'm gonna go with the undercover orange yarn, orange yarn jeans. Excuse me, Autumn Winter 2004. Uh, it was a, the collection titled, but beautiful. Um, now this is obviously an iconic piece has been reissued. I believe it was reissued in 2010. Um, but I would go for the original autumn winter, 2004, uh, garment. Now for me, this gene, it's iconic because of the yarn, right? They've done the orange yarn, uh, the red yarn and blue yarn, I believe. Um, but for me, it, it's, it, you would think like, why would anybody spend, you know, this much money on a pair of jeans? And, and while you're right, I think that. Uh, just like the silhouette, it, it kind of does like the same thing that Capital does for me. It just, I just love how worn in they look. I love the distressing on them. I also love like the stitching on them as well. And just like the different detailings that you can find throughout the jean. I, I think they're a beautiful pair of pants. Um, skinny fit. Now I don't have very many skinny jeans these days. However, I think these would look beautiful paired up with like a pair of Andy boots um, and kind of like a slimmer silhouette. I think these would work beautifully. So I'm going to go uh, with the undercover uh, Autumn Wintum 04 yarn jeans. Um, the orange yarn would be beautiful to have, and hopefully one day I can have these in the collection. But yeah, not the biggest, biggest undercover head by any means, but I think these jeans are just absolutely beautiful and uh, a pair that one day I would love to have in the collection. So, um, okay, last girl piece for you, Corey. I think we're going to stay along the lines of trousers. It's going to be kind of unconventional, but I'm going to go with like, a pair of Laura Piana sweatpants made of Vicuna. The best way to describe it is almost like a similar, a special type of cashmere that's essentially, um, if I'm not mistaken, only Laura, P Laura Piana actually has exclusive access to Vicuna. It's based, I think it's in Colombia because they, or sorry, no, it's Peru because they actually help with the conservation of the Vicuna, which is a type of like uh, fucking uh, like llama, I think. It's like mm. kind of like a llama. Um, Damn. And it's only in like, lives in the Peru mountains. And because Laura Piana actually pays for the, um, pays for like the, pays to help conserve them and like pays to help like, with poaching and all that stuff. But that's why they have exclusive access to it. And I personally have one by Kuna piece, Louis Vuitton um, Peace and Love sweater from the Kim Jones era, I believe it's last season. Um, and it's the one, it, it's 50% by Kuna and 50% cashmere. It's just, it, it feels unreal. Dylan, I believe this is your last piece, right? Uh, I've got a couple more, but yeah, I can't do five, but we're going to stick with five. Yeah, 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 stick with five. All right, <laughs> last piece last piece for the list. What do you got? Last one I've got is the Undercover Autumn Winter 05, I think. Maybe they're Swing Summer 05, I'm not sure. But um, they're the 85 Arts and Crafts denim. Mm. The black pair and the blue pair. I'm doing two, I don't care. I got to get both. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I saw them was when T wore them. Because the pick's now archived, so you can't find it. But he had them on his page, and he was with uh, he wore them with the, what the off blazers, blazers, right? I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, dude, that fucking picture. That picture. Ooh. Bring it back, T. What are you doing? Because before I thought eighty five was just like too loud to wear, or whatever. But I saw that, and I was like, 
That's yeah. how I thought too. I, I saw the price too. And it was like 1.5. I was like, there's no way I'm spending that much money on denim. And then they went to three and I'm like, there's still no way I'm spending that much money. And now they're at like four or five. And it's like, can they please just come down so I can buy a pair? <laughs> yeah. They keep going up though. And I, and I keep procrastinating. I just got to pull the trigger one day and just get them. I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful jean. I've seen fit pics with these and, and they look insane. Like the way people. Oh dude. These. And the fit on, yeah. On, the fit on those too. I've heard they all fit differently. I've heard some are like baggy, some are skinny, some are slim. Huh. Interesting. So yeah, I've seen pictures. Yeah, of them being like, I believe the, the difference between the fit comes from not only the size, but actually there's a women's variation and a men's variation. Mm. Uh, and the right, women's yeah, is more correct. like skinny, whereas the men's is more of like a slim fit from what I know. You rock but with yeah. the skinny or slim doing? um you know i'm going skinny yes sir the waffle As a heady special. boy of course heady boy special <laughs> yes <laughs> guys that was our top five gorillas we were able to keep it under an hour thank god but hopefully with the pictures on the screen you'll be able to follow along a lot of really interesting pieces that we were able to discuss and hopefully one day all five of us can can get these in the collection uh, keep it locked in as always with the selective at the selective on instagram and of course our website selective.com i'll have all of that linked in the show notes below um next week we have a really special interview t is going to be helping me with that so stay tuned for that i think you all have a lot of fun make sure to leave us a five-star review on the apple podcast app we will give you a shout out uh, in the next episode uh, we've already gotten a few five-star reviews so thank you for everyone who has left a five-star review uh, i appreciate the support shout out joseph larna really interesting content i've been following t for a while and was hyped to see him start a podcast with the selective can't wait for more episodes Joseph, thank you for leaving us a five-star review. And to all of everyone else who has left the five-star review, thanks for the support. We really appreciate it. Uh, for Dylan, for me, and for Corey, thank you all for coming on. I appreciate the time. Corey, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks. My pleasure. Yeah, Dylan, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And I will see you all next week. <laughs>